Hey, I'm Henry Regis. I'm with the Cobra's headquarters in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm the national coordinator. I've been doing this since 2014. I've actually been here twice. So you may have seen me before. Back in 2012, we had a nice pizza party, and a lot of you guys came out. And then last year, we were, I think we were in the art museum. I'm trying to remember where it was. Brandigan yeah. Cultural Center. Cultural yeah. Center, right. And we, we did a talk here in April of 17. So happy to be here. So thank you for coming out today. And it's neat that we can all talk about Coparas and the weather. You guys are helping in many ways. You don't know how on, on people using your information. And like I said, th this area is one of the, the, the premier between here and, and, and El Paso and areas west of here, uh, observations. Volunteers have a really great number of folks and it's consistent. And so Coco Ross is like this, it's like a pipe. And we have water coming in and water going out. So as far as volunteers go, we have people signing up and then they get the pipe and they report it, and then people stop reporting, retire, pass away, whatever. Our goal is to keep the water in that pipe as long well, as this end open, but keep it in the pipe and leak it out. And, keep, and so it's amazing in this area how many people have been doing it for a long time. The longer you observe, the more of a climate record you develop. And you start to see trends over time, and you, you've seen wet years and dry years, and you can see patterns in that. And it's just really great. And some people do it, like I said, 10, 12 years now, 13 years. And so that really is amazing. And how that helps Dave can tell you more about that. That really supplements a lot of stuff out there. So tonight, I want to talk to you about a quick look at this area, how we're doing, and then some other things we have going on with Pocahontas right now. But that up on the far end, and there's Nolan. You guys probably know Nolan from his newsletters. And mm -hmm. how many people read his farm stories? Read them at the end of the day. Very popular on that. Nolan has kind of retired as a state climatologist, and so he's taking more and more time off. But he's still part of us. Russ Schumacher, the third person from the left, is our new state climatologist. He's my new boss. And, and Abigail is a part-time a student working with us. Noah Newman, if you ever have questions, he's at our help desk. And, and Julian Turner is our, uh, does our web stuff. And then Danny does our QC. So Danny works with that and he'll get it. So that's our team. And that's a view out our office in, in the background where our office is on the Foothills campus. Part one, so here's an overview of the network. A history of Cobra. So how did we start? And if we go to the next slide, back in 1997, we had a flash flood in Fort Collins, Colorado. And we got a lot of rain. In fact, we had over 15 inches, or close to 15 inches in 24 hours. Now, that's our yearly rainfall, so that's a lot. Five people were killed in the city of Fort Collins from this. And so it really was pretty tragic campus, the library, they had moved, they were renovating, they moved all the books to the basement. Oh. And, oh, it was terrible. Dam all the dissertations, everything was damaged. And so the campus got flooded out. But we learned a couple things from this. And the next, next slide will show you that a couple things we learned is there's extreme local variation in rainfall. You've seen that here with your observations. Rain on one side of town, not so much on the other. So here's the distance, here's point A. This is actually where I live in this area. We weren't living there at the time. 14 and a half inches. Nolan was up here. And then point B is only five miles away. If you've ever been to Fort Collins, here's I-25. Here's the football stadium. Only, only five miles between A and B. And so that much rainfall, the gradient was that tight during that storm. But it was quite, quite the distance. Uh, the Weather Service didn't put out any warnings that night. They had a lot of storms going on that were more impressive. This was a low didn't have a lot of thunder or lightning, not very severe, just produced a lot of rain. And then nobody sent in any warnings because nobody was measuring rain at that time. So nobody let anybody know anything was happening. We could have probably saved lives. We had a, another storm in 2013 uh, along the front range, dumped 17 inches on Boulder. Uh, Big Thompson Canyon got flooded again and so forth. There was many, many officer Coparas volunteers. The word got out, saved a lot of lives. So you guys play an important role in for the public as well as as you measure do with rainfall. Next slide. So there we are, in 1998, we started a few dozen volunteers around the front range of Colorado. And uh, and then now, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary with Ross here in 2018. And uh, now we have over 20,000 volunteers in 50 states. We're in all the provinces of Canada. We're in Puerto Rico, US Virgin Islands. And we started the Bahamas back in uh, 2016 
one of the ideas, I work with the uh, World Meteorological Organization on one of, one of their management teams in Geneva, Switzerland. And so we're trying to say, how can we take something like Kokoros and do this around the world? And so we did a pilot in, in the Bahamas trying to figure this out because what happens in a lot of these countries, they get a pot of money and they say, oh, we're gonna buy the biggest piece of weather equipment that we can get. And we'll put a weather station out there. It looks really impressive and the government says, wow, oh, you're doing great. And then after six months a year, nobody maintains it and the thing just kind of falls apart. Okay, so three things. We've decided we're just gonna do precipitation. Yeah. And so we do rainfall data, uh, data, and we are the, the largest source of daily precip measurements in the United States, so you guys, you're part of that. So we measure, we measure snow, and then we measure hail. And you've had hail storms here. You've had yeah. hail storms. I was just at the, the North American Hail Conference, and they, this is the first time they've held this, and that was in Boulder, Colorado. We had folks from all over the world, from China, from Switzerland, from Spain, different places, and they said, oh, Kokoros, they said, the hail, your stuff is really, the data is, they're using it, they're using it in China to model different things. I had another person in Spain said, oh, we learned how to make hail pads by watching your website, we're doing that there. So there's a lot of good things that are coming with this, and it's a great repository for hail in the United States. Here's our website, you've all been there, I'm sure, over time. A lot of great side things, if you ever get a chance to click on these, and all different parts on the main page. Sometimes you may go right to your home page, but if you click on, there's a lot of educational opportunities we have on here. And there is a daily measurement, and all those dots are across volunteers, and very important are those zeros. So the gray dots on there are people that are reporting when there's no rain. It's been two months and it's zero, zero, zero put in there. But if you can do that, it's really helpful, especially if it is a rainy day, and you know you would have had any rain, but other places around you. So there's your county warning area. Yeah. So you guys, you, you don't realize what you're doing, but it really, it really benefits a lot, of, a lot of, not only yourself to know, hey, this is what I got, and my neighbor got that, and we can talk about it, but all over the country. Next one, there's the gauge, you've seen that. We say that maintenance is not in the equipment, but in the volunteers. And so our job is to encourage you guys and to, to do what we can to help out and to kind of reward you with different things as far as we can. And, 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 you know, again, very much appreciate all that you're doing. Really, really do. There's the gauge again. It holds uh, over 11.3. Has anybody ever had a gauge overflow here? I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, a little bit. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I'm talking about the bowl. Oh, no. 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 We're getting a lot of those. In Hawaii, they were overflowing a lot. In Hawaii. But we've had them down south in different places, but I don't think we've ever had one in New Mexico overflow. Back in, not only this store, but back in April, we had a volunteer on Kauai, and he had 36 inches of rain in 24 hours. We thought that was going to be the state record. Wow. But he was out there several times during the eve, during the overnight, and he emptied his gauge. Wow. And so, yeah, so when, once you're getting over 11.3, you know, we know that it's, it's really coming down. So 7 a.m., now, we ask everybody to report at 7 a.m. if they can. I know, well, I like to sleep in every once in a while, and we want it to be a fun project. So report as close as you can. If it's a dry day, don't worry about it. If, it's, if, if you can, 7 a.m., we take reports on, so when I say reports, when you take the observation, about two, uh, two hours, two and a half hours either side, they'll show up on the maps. Mm -hmm. And so what's nice about it, if we can get everybody to report at the same time, then we kind of know uniformly what fell where mm -hmm. overnight and so forth. And so if you can do that, and some people like Matter International millimeters, so you can report in millimeters on there as well to convert things back and forth. Most people don't, but uh, we have that option as well. And there's the, there's the form. And so how many people use the Kokoros app on their cell phone? Okay, so that, that's, that's a nice thing that's out there now. And if you go and you pull it up, with, whichever phone you have, you can go out there. If you're like me, I'll go out to the gauge and I'll look, and I forget to write it down, and I go inside and say, oh, geez, is that 0.22 or 0.32? Or if you have that, you just punch it in and, and send it right from there. Or take a piece of paper. The other thing is, the observation notes. This is really important. You may not realize how these these notes you can put in there. You can write like that. But <laughs> put in there what happened, especially if you have heavy rain. It really helps the weather service and others to know that you know you, you had 
six inches of rain or three inches of rain and it all fell within two hours or something. Or we had a lot of wind last night. We had the thunderstorms when we were at two in the morning. It's just great to have that on there. And we do look at these. In fact, we have a team of volunteers around the country that reads every observation, every day, every notes. So people will type in sometimes, I bet you never look at my stuff. Oh. And they get a reply back the next day, oh yes, we do. You know? <laughs> but anything really critical and important, they'll relay that to us and they'll let us know. So again, when you put these notes in, it's really helpful. You, know, you don't have to do it every day, but when you, you feel like doing that, or you put the temperature in there, or whatever you want, but that's, that's for you guys. Next one. And here's the, here's the map. So we have the local map, and here is a look at Las Cruces. You can see all the dots around there. Um, there's a national map and a table form. And this table, you can go on here, and you can sort these different columns, and so you can see how much fell in different places and so forth. So this is something you may not know, but all of your observations, once you make 100 observations, they are stored at the national so NCEI, they just renamed that, National Center for Inf Environmental Information. It used to be NCDC, National Climatic Data Center. And so they have what's called the Global Historical Climate Network, the daily one. This stuff gets archived in there, and so all your observations get put into this. And so it's a really neat thing for the national record that your stuff is going into history with this here. And so that is really important. When I say 100, if you make 100 observations, it goes in there. The other thing about 100 observations, we have found now that if people make at least 100 observations, they're likely to stay with the program for about three to five years. So that really shows us something there, that the dedication of doing that. The toughest thing is to get people to, to get the gauge out of the box to begin with. People get the gauge, and we don't hear from them. And I, I, know, I tell people, as soon as you get the gauge, just stick it outside. That's the easiest thing to do, and you can start measuring. Mm -hmm. But you make a couple observations, you're more than likely, and like we said, we've got people here that have made them since wow, 2000, 2005. 2005, that's a lot of them. The water years, everybody know about the water years? So Cobras water year runs, and most water years run from October 1st through September 30th. We gauge how much rain falls mm -hmm. in that year. What's neat, you can go on the website, and you can pull up the water year summary. Pull that up and, and you can go to New Mexico each year and list this. And then you can go by, by find your station. This is in Albuquerque. We click on here and we click on charts. And so you go to charts in the next slide. We can put together some really cool charts. So this is for everybody can do this on their own station at home with your number. And it's as you move the cursor along here, it puts different, tells you how much fell. But this is the, the monthly precipitation total. So each month, how much you got, it graphically displays that. And this is the prism normals. So this here is a 30 year average of what is normal over 30 years they look to fall in there. And you can see how you compare with that. The next one is the accumulated precip chart. So this chart shows you as you go through the water year, how much rain you're getting. Here's 20 inches, and so we see where it hits that. And you can, they're really fun to look at, especially going back, you can go back all the way to 2005, and see all your reports on here each year, what you got. And the next one on the top is a daily precip chart. So each day that we have precip, it puts a little graph on here. And here's one, wow, this July 17th was a big storm, almost four inches. Here's one almost three inches, September 7th of 17. So it's another neat thing to have that shows you, and you guys, this is all free, but it's a, it's a great thing a lot of people don't know about. We try to tell folks about this, but sometimes they forget. But it, it's one, there's a lot of neat things on the Cocos website with some of the stuff that, some added value for education that you guys can look and, and see what fell by your, uh, your area. Here we go. So this is a map, and this is looking at the accumulated precip uh, over New Mexico without Cocoros data and with. And this is a daily map that's put out by the Midwest Regional Climate Center. And you can see that we get a better, it's, it's like I say, a digital camera. You get a digital camera, the more pixels, the clearer the picture is, and so the more points we have, the finer tuned it is, and we can see what <coughs> fell where. And then there's other groups out there like co-op. We want to supplement other organizations that are measuring so we can all come together and get a real clear picture of what rain fell where. And as, as uh, 
John and Dave were mentioned earlier, that some places there's not a lot of observation. So the more observers we have there, we can really see, did much rain fall in this area or not? And so by having the observation, we can tell. Cool. Next one. Okay, so here we go. And the other thing is, uh, anybody call a co-op observer here? Okay, this is a co-op observer. It's similar to Coco Ross, if you're interested. Uh, National Weather Service has these folks, and they do a little bit more with temperature and so forth, but they, 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 they uh, are some official measurements. And this is for the El Pet. So all these red dots are co-op observers, and all the green dots are Coco Ross observers. So the, the red dots are what you guys get as far as how much rain fell, but all the green ones can supplement that. So the more folks we have, the more we can help out a group like co-op. And the other thing is when co-op is looking for a new observer there, they go to Coco Ross. It's like the minor leagues in baseball. Hey, this guy's a great observer. Let's see if we can get him to help out. So a lot of times they'll recruit from the Coco Ross observers. Next one. Here's the radar. And uh, again, in a lot of parts of the country, uh, and coverage is pretty good, but in certain parts it's not. And I'm sure your beam gets blocked in some areas here as well with the mountains, yeah. especially Franklin's and the Oregon's. They block our Santa yeah. Teresa radar, and then of course the White Sands. That one gets blocked in other directions. So what's that saying? Is the beam goes out, it hits, the, it can't penetrate through the mountain, and so there's really no real radar coverage in that area. And by having you guys on the ground. Measuring, that helps the ground truth and said, yeah, we, we, we did get two inches of rain over here last night, where they can't tell that a lot of times with the, without the radar. So again, it really helps. And, and then here's another one. One observation can make a real critical difference, especially where there are a few observers. I took this out of an airplane, I, I, but I love to do that. And what this picture shows is really neat is that Rainfall is a rain shaft and not much, not much, but here's that one rain coming down. And so it's important to see that that's again why we have the observers. Your early warnings help for flash floods. And so we went, we decided to go camping in Glacier National Park. Well, it was flash flood week, unfortunately, around here. This is we look at some of the trails got washed out, so we stayed in hotels. But again, early warnings for flash floods upstream. You guys, if you live in a rural area, sometimes it's really helpful. Here's the 2013 Colorado flood. So I mentioned earlier that in 97 we had the flood, there weren't many observers. Look at all these black dots, all Coferas observers. Here's Denver, Boulder, Fort Collins, and so all those folks, they got a great picture, they're able to tell, and it really made a big difference in, in what happened. So again, the density of the network, we're able to help with that. Next one, this is, this is an interesting example. People say, well, you know, I live near, so and so, he's right down the street. We don't need an out. I don't need to put a gauge out. Here in New Braunfels, Texas. So this is right near San Antonio. Austin's up here. This guy, if you look, 7.12. Here's a zero. 0 0.07, 0 0.06, nothing. So when he put his observation, we said, I bet he put the time in 7, 12 in the morning. What's the case? They had. Over seven inches fell in two hours in the afternoon. What happened on the radar? The storm just blew over like one of those, and that was it. And dumped all the rain, the whole thunderstorm right overhead. Had we not had him, and the radar beam did not pick it up, it was too close, they said that that really helped having that report come in because they didn't realize that was a, the flooding and stuff was going on there. The, guy, the guy's wife was home, he was out, and he couldn't get back to the ranch because of all the floods around their property. But this is a great example of showing how important you may play a role in, in having an observation that nobody else has here. And it's really helpful, plays a critical uh, to, to all of us. So a lot of times we'll be looking at Cobras headquarters as stuff comes in, and we'll see that. They also, what, what can happen, and you guys may not know this, but you can file what's called a significant weather report. And you probably know what those are. And you may not, if you don't, if there's heavy rain or snow or hail, you put that in and it goes right to his office there. It'll send out a, an alarm. I don't know if yours is an alarm or not. I think I mentioned today, I think it is. And it lets them know, hey, there's a, you know, over here down by El Paso, there's a really, it's a lot of rain coming down. It's like extra eyes and ears out in the field. It's real time, so it's a 24-hour one. And that's what this was, the person put that in 
and we were able to tell that. And so we thought it was You ever seen anything like this? I thought it was an atomic bomb test at one time. <laughs> that is Phoenix and the microburst of 2016. We had two observers underneath that. That was taken from a helicopter by a guy named Jerry Ferguson. But again, just showing how spotty and how variable the rainfall can be in the in the summertime from these different storms. So again, having it out there is really important. This is what I just talked about, significant weather reports. Any reports, extra eyes and ears in the field looking out for this. Never put yourself in danger for cold If there's ice out there, if there's lightning, let it go. So this one was coming from Rhode Island. Uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, the storm was moving across. There was a guy out there, he got an inch in 15 minutes. They sent it to the Taunton uh, Weather Service office. They put out a flash flood warning in it, and it was really helpful during rush hour there. So these are being used in, in different weather service offices. I'm sure you've seen them here, and uh, they play a critical role in helping with that. So, okay, so how are we doing in southern New Mexico? Pretty good. Let's take a look. Here we go. 327 active observers. These are folks who have reported at least one time in the last 365 days. And in the last since July 1st, we've had 293 observers. Now, and I, I, I mentioned this here, this is the, called the CWA, the County Warning Area. So each weather service office has a bunch of counties that they're responsible for. And your El Paso weather service office that's down in uh, Saint, is it Santa Teresa? Yes. Santa Teresa um, is responsible for these counties and then two, El Paso and Hudson in, over here in, in Texas. And so, this is great, these, these numbers, we can always use more, but 103 folks in this county, that is really something to be proud of with the population that you have, it's, it's great. And as we go even out in sort of rural areas, 21, 20, 55 in the Grant area, and you can see here the population of each place and how many folks we have. So you're doing great, we can always use more, but I want you to say, you know, don't, don't take the foot off the gas pedal, keep, keep recruiting folks but it is really a healthy area uh, around the country. And so we, we really applaud you guys for that. Next one. Okay, so we put these graphs together uh, for recruiting. So how have we done in recruiting over time in this area? And so in, in uh, the best years, we started in 2005, we had 163 people sign up in this area. And then we had 100 again in 12, 127 to 13. Last year, we had 52 observers signed up. This year it's been down. Only 22 have, have signed up. The, the sad news with that is we lost 33. Mm -hmm. So if you look at these numbers, it's a negative. We're, we're losing observers uh, in this CWA. So the more we can recruit people and get them reported, we can stay steady with stuff over time, and that, that helps everybody. But I just wanted to show this up here. We, we do an analysis on that. Part of my job is I go around the country and visit weather service offices and different groups just to kind of say, here's how you're doing. And it's not bad. I mean, you, you, you've recruited a lot of people over time. I think we've had a total of 881 people sign up over the, 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 the 13 years here. And currently we have, of those 881, 293 are still active. So, you know, that, that's, that's a long time. Uh, people doing this and we don't expect you to do it forever. It's, so, Okay, uh, oh, so here we go. So see if any of these are your numbers on here, but this is the number of reports you've made. And this is pretty amazing because I don't think anywhere else in the country we have this many folks with reports over 4,000. 31 observers have reported over 4,000 reports out there. And 51 have made a total <laughs> over 3,000. And so this is something to really be proud of. You guys have done a great job with that. Here's a list of everybody on there. And so, again, thank you. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to come to talk to groups like this because we don't see this that often as they go around. Mm -hmm. All right, so part three. I know I'll get long-winded. We're just rounding it up. Do you follow social media? Coco Ross gets on there. A lot of times people are, you know, a lot of young people are doing this Twitter now and Facebook and stuff like that. And so... We're on there, and you can see Coco Ross getting, and that's one way to share things back and forth with other. Next one, brochures. So I brought a bunch of brochures with me. So again, we've got those available, and uh, 
Dave's got some more back in his office. We have a Spanish version too. This is a neat thing, the watershed mapping tool. This is a new thing on there. What you can do is you can go in and you put in your address or any address you like, you type it in, and it gives you a map of your watershed in your area. And so here's a spot, and it shows you all the different watersheds that flow into yours. And so it's a great, it's, it's teaching people that the water, where do we get our water? It's not just out of the tap. It's from all these different places. And so this is a neat interactive tool. You can look at that anywhere in the country. And uh, it, it goes to, if you're familiar with hydrology, it's something called a huck. It goes to the 10 huck. So it really, really pulls in. You can zoom in and out on that. Next one. Okay. So this is the final, couple final slides. We have additional resources that you guys can be part of out there. Uh, we'll talk about, let's go through them real quick. Next one. There we go. Weather talk webinars. Have you ever listened to one of our weather talk webinars? Yeah. They're really, really quite informative. We have had a total of 62 of these out here. And people, we, we get on, we record them. They're all on YouTube. You can listen. All different, different topics from thunderstorms, from tornadoes. We've talked. We've had the, and we get the people that really know this stuff. We had the head of the tsunami warning center on there. He did this. What? We've got. Guy did water spouts, all different climate experts, um, all different stuff. We try to get all the top people in the field to help do these. We, so it's basically an hour show where we, they present their information, then we take questions back and forth. It's your condition reports. This is something we've just started. Has anybody here followed the condition report? Or do they even, do you guys even know what they are? So what this is, is you can go on the website. We ask Sunday night or Monday, somewhere around here is it's an extra click on the button to pull up a condition report. I can show you guys later how to do that. So what's the condition of your landscape out there? Is it dry? Is it normal? Is it wet? If it's dry, how dry? Dry, moderately dry, severely dry. You just click the button and tell us a little bit about, about it. Oh, you know, the fishing pond in the back is, is dried up. Or my corn. I tried growing it, and this year it's, and so th to get these condition reports are really helpful for the U.S. Drought Monitor, and that's something that goes out, and that's put out of uh, um, Lincoln, Nebraska, this drought monitor comes. Anyway, if you get a chance to try this out, give it a shot, go on the, web on the website. Your information is really used as well. Um, this helps with crop insurance, all kinds of stuff like that, so it's really, really helpful. We don't have a lot of reports in this area down here, so it, 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 that's the one thing we are lacking in, in the West Cruises area. The Intermountain West Drought Early Warning System, you guys are part of this, and so once a week we update what the drought looks like. Oh, that's right, so some places we don't have observers. So, Stan, we recruited this guy. He was good for a while, but then he started spilling the gauge, decimal errors, so we had a look. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and special thanks, thanks Matt Spees out of uh, Connecticut put a lot of stats together for us today. But I really appreciate the chance to get to speak with you guys and a great group and again, we really appreciate it. So thank you.